Okay. We're at Walnut Lane Golf Course. We are at the 40th 40.029. So we're still right on the cusp of the 40th parallel. And I came here because to my overstanding this is the site of the Hermit's Lodge the, the Society of the Woman of the Wilderness they built their 40 by 40 lodge right here uh, and what is today the Walnut Lane Golf Course we're very close to the Hermit's Cave, Johan Kelp's Cave. It's right on the other side of Henry Avenue, right there, where you see the cars. Henry Avenue and Hermit's Lane. We'll go there one day. But uh, I came here to talk about an interesting issue. When uh, last episode, Mike Wan showed us there was a 40th degree parallel marker uh, right on the Susquehanna when we went to Boulder we saw that whole city is built around the 40th parallel baseline road and all of that why is there not a 40th parallel marker in Philadelphia and it's an interesting history it's tied into the Mason Dixon line and I thought it would be good to come here and share that information you know so okay for cartographers the Mason and Dixon line is an east-west line located at 39 degrees 43 minutes 20 seconds okay it's the border between Maryland, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. The Pennsylvania-Maryland border was defined as the line of latitude 15 miles south of the southernmost house in Philadelphia. Okay? And that southernmost house is located at South Street and Front street and there is a historical marker there that shows like hey this is the beginning survey point for the Mason Dixon line why did they have the Mason Dixon line because a problem arose when Charles II granted a charter for Pennsylvania in 1681 the grant defined Pennsylvania's southern border as identical to Maryland's northern border but described it differently because Charles II relied on an inaccurate map. The terms of the grant clearly indicate that Charles II and William Penn believed the 40th parallel would intersect the 12 mile circle which was a surveyed arc around Newcastle, Delaware. When in fact, the 40th parallel is north of the original boundaries of the city of Philadelphia. Okay, I'm right at the cusp of the 40th parallel here at Hunting Park and Kelly Drive, right on the banks of the Schuylkill River. We're going to just walk up until we get right on the 40th parallel. And this is the easiest way in, here we are, this is the easiest way in Philadelphia to get right on the 40th parallel is to walk along Kelly Drive. That way you're not obscured by uh, blocks or houses or anything like that. Here we are, right on the 40th parallel. See, 
see if I go too far, it bounces me back to the 39th. Okay, you see if I turn this way, it says I'm at the 39th. And wow, it's funny. I guess this is the GPS, okay. Sensitivity of the GPS. But again, this is the 40th parallel. Philadelphia. See, we're right here at Laurel Hill Cemetery. Okay. We'll, we'll have to get into the science of Laurel Hill one day. But this is where we are at the 40th parallel. Yeah, here we are on the other side of Laurel Hill Cemetery on Ridge Avenue, okay? So, when we were down on Kelly Drive, I showed you where the 40th parallel started, right? Like right on that cusp. Well, here we are on Ridge Ave, very close to that cusp, okay? 40.0021 degree of latitude right on the cusp and here we have a historical marker for the commercial commercial digital computer birthplace BINAC the world's first commercial electronic stored program digital computer pass verification test here at 3747 Ridge Ave on April 7th 1949 so the 52nd anniversary was yesterday today is April 8th customer acceptance of Univac 1 the world's first open market commercial computer followed on March 30th 1951 J. Presper Eckhart and John W. Malky, co-inventors of ENIAC, led the development of both of these pioneering machines, which launched the commercial computer age. So the commercial computer age started right here on the cusp of the 40th parallel. Looks empty now, 3747. It's behind barbed wire. Y'all can see where we are. And that was the site that I, I you know, took y'all to on Kelly Drive to show you. It's the, the 40th degree of latitude, the easiest way to find it, the exact location in Philadelphia, is to go on Kelly Drive by the Schuylkill River at uh, Hunting Park and get yourself a latitude and longitude uh, app and you'll see the exact cusp of it. Okay? But Penn's Philadelphia is South Street to Spring Garden from the Delaware to the Schuylkill. And so, right, you see that 40th degree of latitude is north of Penn's original Philadelphia. The Penns who controlled Pennsylvania and the Calverts who were in charge of Maryland hired Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon to survey the territory and draw a boundary line to which everyone could agree. In 1784, surveyors David Rittenhouse and Andrew Ellicott and their crew completed the survey of the Mason-Dixie line to the southwest corner of Pennsylvania, five degrees from 
the Delaware River. So from about 75 degrees west longitude to about 80 degrees west longitude. Other surveyors continued west to the Ohio River. The line was not called the Mason-Dixon line when it was first drawn. Instead, it got this name during the Missouri Compromise, which was agreed to in 1820. It was used to reference the boundary between states where slavery was legal and states where it was not. It first took on this meaning in 1780 when Pennsylvania abolished slavery. Over time, more northern states would do the same until all states north of the line did not allow slavery. This made it the border between slave states and free states. After this, both the name and its understood meaning became more widespread and it eventually became part of the border bet between the succeeded Confederate States of America and the Union territories. And this all also shows why Baseline Road was needed out west because the Mason-Dixon line was at that point the major east-west baseline and it was founded on a mistake and was an attempt to rectify a mistake so yes so to summarize Lord Baltimore and the Calverts were granted a charter on the, the 39th parallel William Penn was granted a charter of the 40th parallel. Penn inaccurately thought that the 40th parallel began at Newcastle, Delaware, what is today Newcastle, Delaware. And because of that, built capital city of his colony, Philadelphia, on the 39th parallel. Once it was realized that the 40th parallel actually began north of colonial Philadelphia, Maryland made a claim for that land, and that was the foundation of the dispute. The Mason-Dixon line was thus formed, and the definition of the Mason-Dixon line is the degree of latitude 15 miles south of the southernmost house in Philadelphia, and that is 39 degrees, 43 minutes, 20 seconds. And the 40th degree of parallel actually is a part of metropolitan Philadelphia, is the Philadelphia that expanded during the act of consolidation, which combined nine separate boroughs into what is today the greater metropolitan Philadelphia area. The 40th degree of latitude, roughly you could say, is defined by Hunting Park Avenue with its beginning at the Schuylkill, Kelly Drive, and it extends all the way close to the Delaware River in Frankfurt. That more or less is the, I guess you could say, is the general road that defines the 40th parallel. And it's because of all of this, uh, there is no 40th parallel marker in Philadelphia.